This one's for the ladies. Let's check out the show. All right, I'm going to make you think this week. I try to do that every week, but especially this week. I'm going to talk about... I read an article about detecting Parkinson's disease early through a blood test. I will put the link in the description below. Now, my question to you is... Oh, I should tell you, um, if you want to email me, jmacpodcaster. I'll throw it up on the screen right there. Instagram, jeremymac76. And uh, I'm on the deck. I think the cold snap is finally finished, and we are... In the green, so to speak. All right, here we go. Let me get back to my original train of thought. If you could know 10 years ahead of time that you were going to develop Parkinson's disease, I guess that uh, through a blood test or otherwise, would you want to know? Here's my, here's my thing. What good does it do you to know? There's no way to stop it. There's no way to slow it down other than exercise, which I've always been an active person. Would it make you live your life differently? Now, I will say this. Uh, my son was born in 2012 in April. This was about eight months before I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed in January 2013. Would it have stopped me from having a child? I'd tell you, it might have. Now, I, my son's a pain in the ass right now. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Liam. But I love him dearly. I, I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want, ever want to have him not in my life. Um, but it just goes to show you that it's kind of like a complicated issue. Um, for instance, if, had I known, okay, let's just say from 2009 till 2013 when I was diagnosed, I was freaking miserable. I almost said the F word there, freaking miserable. I was depressed. My body hurt. I was having weird dreams, weird, uh, mood swings. My band had broke up in 2008 that I had going since about 2006. Um, but in 2007, when my band was at the height of its whatever, the glory, <laughs> it's just a cover band. But when we were playing out a lot, we had people come to the shows, I began to develop vocal troubles. Now, you're singing in a rock band, you're screaming for three hours a night, as well as talking over the noise of the bar for hours afterwards. Vocal strain is normal, but what I was experiencing was the weakening of my muscles due to Parkinson's disease. Now, I, I had screamed a lot, but it was the two things kind of converging. Try not to show my smashed finger here. That's why I'm kind of keeping my right hand down. Um, would I have wanted to know at, at the height of my band's success, little as it was, would I wanted to know then that I basically had the beginning symptoms of Parkinson's disease. That's when my, my right, my, 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 my cording hand started to freeze up on me. I don't think I would have wanted to know. Now, if there was a treatment that could have slowed or stopped it, hells to the yeah, hells to the yeah. But currently there is not one. And I don't even know if there's really anything in the pipeline that it, predictably in the near future, they've been, this is the, this is the thing they've been looking at for years, the airplane flying over. That's the cost of doing the video outside, but I love it anyway. Um, I don't think I would have wanted to know because there was no way to stop it. And frankly, the the te the uh, technology or the uh, advancements in into that area of stopping or slowing it down, I don't know that it would do me a, a lot of good at this point. I mean, I'm sure I would take it, but Parkinson's has pretty much already wrecked my brain pretty bad. Now, granted, I'm 12 years in. Michael J. Fox is 30 years in. Do the math. Um... When I would have liked to known uh, that I had Parkinson's was when my symptoms began to become overwhelming. Um, 2009, the depression started. I basically, I, I, for lack of a better term, I went nuts for a while. Just my brain, my brain was telling me something's wrong. Warning signs were flashing. I was having trouble tapping my foot. Weird things driving me nuts. I got on some antidepressants. Those helped quite a bit. Um, I don't know that I would have wanted to start Cinemet that early because, you know, we know all of the side effects of that, um, which that's a whole other subject. It may not actually be the medicine, it may be the disease progression that creates these side effects because our brains are less functional. So I guess about two, from 2000, 
late 2010 into 2013. So let's say two and a half years, thereabouts, a little, little over two years. I needed Cinemet then. I spent two stints on uh, the, uh, dis the the well, not the dis not the disability list, but I couldn't work. I, I would go out on short term. I guess it's short term disability, so I guess it was disability. I was going to doctors, chiropractors, neurologist, back specialist, neck specialist, shoulder specialist, feet specialist. So for two years, I went in and out of doctor's offices, and I was exhausted all the time. I felt like I was dying. That's when I would have needed the cinnamon. It probably could have bought me a couple more functional years at the beginning of my Parkinson's. Maybe, who knows. But I don't think I would have wanted to know any sooner than I started to, be, than I started to have severe physical symptoms. Once again, because there's nothing they can do to stop or slow this disease down other than exercise, which I was doing. And that's kind of the, the depressing thing. I had this guy when I first was diagnosed. He was a drummer. <clears throat> I don't think he watches, but if he does, Renee, hey, I'm talking to you. I'm one of my Cubano friends. Um, and he, he was he went, he was like starting a band, and he said, hey, hey, Jay, want to come jam with me? And I was like, I told him I was recently diagnosed with Parkinson's. Basically, I was dealing with some, with some fatigue issues. He's, he, said, but he said they caught it. They caught it soon enough, right? And I was like... I just kind of said, mm, just kind of didn't really address it because it's too complicated and frankly too depressing. It was like early in the morning at work. I just got there. I didn't want to talk about how my brain is going to slowly, certain parts of it are slowly going to die off for the rest of my life. And I'm not going to be able to play my guitar. I'm probably going to have trouble speaking, have trouble walking, on and on and on and on. So why don't you leave me your, your comments in the in below and tell me what you want to know early. I mean, if, if I could have known 10 years earlier... 26, 27. No, no. I probably would have been done risky behavior. I mean, I I probably would have... I don't know that I could, could have prepared any more financially than I already was doing. I've been somebody that's always been afraid that I was going to run out of money, so I, I was a saver my whole life. I don't think I could have dealt with the weight of that. I don't think I could have dealt with the weight of that 10 years later in 2006, 2007. I don't think I could have dealt with it. 2010, 2011, yeah, I would have liked to know then because I was, I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? People were like, take some vitamins, do some physical therapy. That, I remember they got this armband stretching thing that I was doing, trying to do for my shoulder, and I was like, I had some a lady tell me, just do what the, just do what the therapist says, you'll get better. I was like, something is not right. I can't move my arm. So yeah, back to you guys. Um, let me know what your opinion is. Would you want to know as early as possible, even knowing there's not a, a any cure or, or way to slow it down, or, or would you just rather wait till the basically the eleventh hour to find out? Would have liked to have known sooner, but it was not for lack of trying. Like I said, I went to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, and uh, I'm glad that part of my life is over. Although right now life is tough. Um, in a certain sense, I love every day. I wake up in pain every morning, but. I've been doing that for years and years and years, even before Parkinson's. So I'm always interested to hear your guys' opinion. As always, thanks for watching. By the way, thanks for watching uh, J Max Silly Stories, whatever the hell I call it. Last week, I know it doesn't do as well in the views because people really want to hear about Parkinson's. But if you if you need a laugh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to mention you, Roger, because you I'm going to I'm going to actually get on the uh, get on the uh, old iPad here and send you a message here in a little bit. But uh, Roger's been having a rough time. I've mentioned him before. But So if anybody wants to send your good vibes and thoughts and prayers to Roger, I'm sure he would appreciate that. He's one of my loyal loyal viewers, and he uh, he liked my silly story. He was a homeschooler, a homeschooler going to the Nutcracker Ballet and the shock of seeing scantily clad women and men. <laughs> All right. By the way, go Blues. Go Blues. Go Cardinals. Uzi, I guess I can I can wish you wish the oil as well. Although I, I hope the Blues beat them if they ever if they play them. But friendly friendly rivalry there. That's all I got. Till next time, peace and love from the beautiful city of St. Louis, Missouri, USA.